steak wasn't a meat I normally smoked until I went to Quebec to shoot a French language barbecue show. That's where I learned a technique I bet you've never heard of. It's called spruce smoking. The aromatic spruce oils give steak an incredible piney flavor. It's common accepted wisdom in the world of smoking and barbecue that you smoke with hardwoods like hickory or oak or apple or cherry, not softwoods. Well, I like to turn things on their head in Project Smoke. And in this dish, smoking with spruce branches gives you an aromatic flavor you just can't get with traditional hardwoods. For steaks, I'm using these monster thick T-bones. Each one is two inches thick. And I like T-bones because they're actually two steaks in one, a filet mignon and a New York strip connected by a T-shaped bone. Now, season each steak with coarse sea salt, and cracked black peppercorns. Pat the seasonings into the meat and turn the steaks over and season the same way on the other side. When beef is this fabulous, you want to keep the seasoning simple. We're using grass-fed beef from a small farm in the Midwest. Remember, where your meat comes from, how it's raised matters as much as how you smoke it. To cook the steaks, I'm using a Komodo Kamado from Indonesia. It has a hinged lid, thick ceramic walls, a hinge grate, and this beautiful mosaic work on the outside. And to fire the grill, another product from Indonesia. This is a charcoal made from compressed coconut shells. And as you know, whenever I grill a steak, I always like to clean the grill grate. And to oil the grill, I'm using a piece of steak fat. I'll hold it between the tongs and rub it over the bars of the grate. So arrange the steaks on the oiled grill grate, all going the same direction, so they cook evenly. And because these steaks are so thick, you'll cook them with the lid closed. So how do you control the heat on a ceramic cooker? Well, you use the vents at the top and the bottom. When open, more airflow comes through, higher heat. When you damper down the vents, you cut the airflow, which gives you a lower heat. We're looking for about 600 degrees Cooking time, about five minutes. Then we'll turn the steaks over. The spruce goes on right at the end. And halfway through, you can give each steak a quarter turn to lay on a crosshatch of grill marks. And once the steaks are browned on the bottom, turn them over. Mmm. All right. And I'll close the lid. And now the part that makes these steaks absolutely unique. So lift the steak and place a few spruce branches on the grate and put the steak back on top of it. And I'll finish the steaks with the grill lid open so I can monitor the cooking. The ends of the spruce needles start to burn, releasing all those aromatic oils. Now to check for doneness, I use the poke test poke the meat 
If it's soft and squishy, it's rare, gently yielding, medium rare. That's where we want to be. When the steaks are cooked, transfer them to a platter. Man, look at those. Don't those look incredible? But you never want to cut into a steak hot off the grill. You always want to let it rest a couple of minutes. So in the interim, here are some mini bell peppers that we grilled earlier. Great flavor, great color. Nice counterpoint to the steak. Well, let's see how we did. The steak on the platter. Mm. Need a really solid steak knife for this. And we'll cut into the steak. Oh, man. Look at that. This steak is incredible. The spruce gives you a smoke flavor, but it's not the heavy smoke of hickory or oak. It's a more piney, aromatic flavor. The smoking technique comes from Canada. The flavor is out of this world.